Good evening all, and welcome. Isn't it wonderful to be able to listen to stories in a safe space? Somewhere where nothing bad can happen to you, right? Somewhere safe, where you're protected. That's what these people thought as well. However, life is always willing to throw you a curveball. I hope you're ready because it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I grew up in an extremely small town in Texas until the age of 13, where all the childhood memories I have are from. My dad lived in Austin and picked me up every other weekend, holidays, and during the summer, so I knew there was another world out there, but this was my home. This is what I was familiar with. As you can imagine in a small town, we're talking 393 people population. Everyone knows everything about everyone. There was plenty of petty crime, like drug use and the occasional peeping Tom. But that person was known to the public by everyone in the town, and they soon left after the event. You got away with nothing if someone else knew about it. Let me mention, because this small town was surrounded by larger towns, we were hardly even considered a school district. K-12th grade in one school, barely 1A. And if you're from Texas, you know what I mean. We didn't even have a real stoplight, and to this day, I don't even know if they do now. One gas station that was closed half the time, and no grocery store. So this town had a voluntary fire department, but no police. That's right, none. You'd call and get the next town's police, which were in the same county. So they considered themselves our police, but were located 20 miles away, 20 miles to drive to an emergency call. So, in my late childhood, when I was around 10, we heard about this handyman named Kyle. Middle-aged big guy who everyone worked with and had inappropriately touched a couple of kids in the town, one of them being my next door neighbour, a teenage girl whose dad considered Kyle his brother. We all knew what he looked like, and felt some type of shame for being so naive and nice, because everyone had met or knew him and thought nothing negative. Even felt safety around him at one point. Those two occasions happened over a year's time, and we hadn't seen him around since the news came out and the kids came forward. He creeped us out, and every adult in town shunned him. Adios, Kyle. So flash forward three years. I am in sixth grade, and one of my schoolmate's parents have asked my mother if their two daughters can stay on a school night, because they had to go to court very early in the morning and needed to prepare. It was no problem, as my mum was a single parent and very understanding. My mum is a very sweet and understanding person, with hardly any boundaries, because she's so understanding, which gets her into trouble but is also very nice to have in a parent. We played outside in the neighbourhood most of the day, and came back to set up my room for three beds, and my mum would be getting dinner ready. When we got back, we noticed my mum seemed like she was going somewhere and had left to come back, which was unusual because there really wasn't anywhere to go. But then I noticed she was drunk, heavily drunk. How long had we been gone? The sun just went down, maybe two hours. A little backstory, my mum is tiny, five foot one, 120 pounds. 
She never drank in my childhood, and when she did it was extremely noticeable. Glassy eyes, slurring, wandering eyes, anger, lying, making no sense. But I could only name a handful of times that happened. And when it did, she had one beer. Any time I saw her with this beer, I would get mad because I knew she wouldn't be normal. She rarely did this, so I remember almost every tantrum I threw. That's why this wasted behaviour made no sense to me, because I knew it was the alcohol. I was immediately embarrassed. My poor friends had to see this mess. I herded them straight to my room, where we got ready for our school day the next morning and tucked ourselves in without any dinner. I knew they must be hungry. So I sat there wide awake, thinking about what we could make the next morning to make up for it. The only light in the room was glowing from the door frame that faced the kitchen. I guessed my mum must be in there. We'd all heard she was shuffling around. Then my friend shook my leg. She said, Zoe, did you hear that man? I lay there frozen. Worry hit the pit of my stomach, and I quickly remembered that I hadn't heard my mother in over an hour. Had she left after we arrived? Did she drive her car that drunk? Is she back? I listened closely, ears ringing from being so alert. Then I heard a woman's laugh trying to be quiet, but obviously failing, like a teenage girl sneaking around the house from her parents. Yep. It was my mum, but the male's voice who came after is what threw a lump in my throat. It was so familiar, and I listened even closer. Then, the next sentence I heard sent my full body into a tingle. My head went hot, and I could even hear my heartbeat. I even felt it in my ears. The man said, So there's three of them there? She's having a sleepover. I jumped out of my bed and leapt into my bedroom door, telling my friends to stay there. I crept out into the hallway and grabbed the house phone from the stand. I turned to the kitchen and took a deep breath before I ran full force into the middle of them, physically pushing my mum behind me and in between the two of us. It was Kyle. I stared him in the face and screamed in the only voice my 13-year-old body could muster. Get out of my house! He stumbled back, surprised and obviously drunk himself. My mum came full force behind me, pulling me back. But luckily at this age I was 5 foot 5 already, and easily her weight. I had her taken. Other than stumble, she hadn't moved. I stared at him right in the face and dialed 911. And before I hit talk, I screamed again. Get out of my house now, or I call the cops. My friend's parents are already on their way. Which they weren't, but that's all I could think of. See, all I could think about was the fact that my mum was on the edge of blackout slash passing out. Which I could tell by the way she could hardly keep her eyes open and couldn't stand upright. And there was this town-known child molester in my kitchen, who knows there are three early teenage girls in the next room sleeping. I was not about to let this guy be here if my mum passed out and we're left alone. He stared at me for a second, and I instinctively hit talk. We all heard the phone ring, and once he took me seriously, he ran off. I knew my mum was about to rage, so I ran after him, but towards the bathroom and locked myself in. The house was less than 800 square feet, so I saw him run out the front door as I made it to the bathroom in under five seconds. I told the operator the situation while shaking and crying, pleading with her to send help. I wasn't thinking of the trouble my mother would get in. I just wanted help and to keep my friends safe. I had no idea if he would return. The operator said help was on its way, but disconnected. They took three hours to arrive, and my friend's parents were already there, 
trying to talk to my mum. The rest of the evening was horrendous while we waited for their parents. I think they eventually caught him for crime in another town, but I have no idea where he came from that night, or why my mum picked him up. My mother could not recall the night, because she was so intoxicated at the time. This night, unfortunately, was the kickoff of a three-year blackout my mum had from alcoholism. It wasn't there, then one day it was, and it tore my family apart. My mum lost three years of her life, and those are three years I wish I had never had to live through. But it made us who we are today, and I wouldn't change that for the world. This was one of many scary situations my mother put me through, but I think Bucking up to someone that vile at 12 was probably the one thing I'll always remember. So Kyle, I hope you're somewhere in prison and that we never meet. This happened a number of years ago. At the time, I lived in Aberdeen, Scotland. I was a 24 year old Scottish guy who shared a flat with a 27-year-old Romanian girl. We were friendly, but not friends. And on her birthday, she asked me if I wanted to go out for a few drinks with her and her friends. She worked at this really cheap and depressing stripper joint behind a bar, so could get free drinks. Fortunately, I already had plans, so declined her offer. I had been there before, and it was grim. So anyway, we both go out on separate nights out. I come home a little drunk about half two or three, grab some water, brush my teeth, and get into bed. I get woken up at four or five a.m. by some doors in the flat opening and closing, and what sounds like some drunken staggering so I assume she's just a little drunk. No big deal. After a while, I can make her out talking quietly and the lower tones of a man responding. I'm kind of surprised at this, as she never had once brought someone back from a night out. But hey, it's her birthday, and I'm not one to judge. Just to make sure they know they've woken me, however, and to try and make sure I don't have to hear anything more, I do a rather loud forced cough, so that they will hopefully keep it down. I hear a door close and think good, so I go back to sleep. We both slept in the next morning, but I'm up first and start making breakfast in the kitchen. Eventually she comes through, looking terrible after having been sick in the toilet. She starts getting some water, and I cheekily ask her, Have fun last night then? She kind of blearily responds, Yeah, it was okay. And I'm like, Nice try. I know you brought back a guy. And she goes white. Startled, she said, That actually happened? Confused by her reaction, I ask what she means. She responds, I thought that was a bad dream. Turns out she didn't bring him back. He had followed her home. The lock at the entry to our block of flats was broken at the time. She had left the strip club after starting to feel really drunk and sick, and she hadn't locked the door to the flat itself as she came in, because she thought she was going to be sick. She rushed to the toilet, and when she went back to her bedroom, she got undressed and went into bed. She was almost asleep when she realised she wasn't alone in the room. She'd managed to stammer the question, What do you want? Alarmed, he loudly and hurriedly replied, I just want water. She said, I can get you some water. Just trying to keep calm in the hopes it wouldn't escalate. And then they hear the cough. My extra loud and hopefully masculine sounding cough startled him and the prospect of a man in the flat apparently scared him off as he ran out the room. That, or the fact that she wasn't unconscious. 
she hurriedly locked the door and went back to bed and passed out. I made her report the incident to the police and they immediately sent two officers round and they interviewed her and scoured through CCTV. This was apparently not the first time this had happened in the area and it appeared the man was working his way up to an attack of some kind. They said it was lucky I coughed and spooked him. They were also convinced that she had likely had something slipped into her drink, but she didn't want to have her urine tested. I think she had been doing some coke. They wanted to make sure she hadn't just mistakenly invited him back, and she pointed out that there was no chance of this, that she wasn't attracted to him at all. When they reviewed the CCTV, he could clearly be seen following her home, but they couldn't figure out where he went after he left. And I hope to never encounter an uninvited creep again. I used to live in a townhouse duplex by myself, with my dog and two cats near a train station. There were often commuters who would park outside my place and pass by throughout the day and night. Occasionally I had cigarettes or stuff stolen from my front veranda. I even had my next door neighbor's ex-boyfriend come to my door telling me he had a hitman after him with a gun. But none of this scared me like the night I was watched. My dog lives indoors and I would take him out just to pee before bed. My backyard light was broken and was up too high to change the bulb, so I always took him out the front. That night it was around 11, and I took him out the front. It was a hot summer night, and I was mindlessly standing on the footpath when I saw movement from across the road from me. Out of nowhere, a man had appeared and was walking diagonally across the street away from me. I thought it odd, because I hadn't seen him come from the other direction. I continued to think about it. Where he came from was outside a house that was being renovated. I knew the owners weren't living there, and thought maybe he was going to try and steal stuff. So I kept looking down the road to see where he had gone. He had turned the corner down the next street. I kept watching, and then I realised I see his head pop around the corner to see if I'm still outside. This gives me the absolute creeps, so I grabbed my dog and went in. I turned off all the lights and went upstairs to my bedroom, which was at the front of the townhouse and faces the street. I thought I would keep watch of my neighbour's house and call the police if he came back. I peer through my blinds which cover sliding doors coming off a small balcony. And like clockwork, I see a dark figure walk down from the corner and down my street. He's moving towards the house across the road, and then I suddenly lose sight of him. A tree in front of my townhouse obscures my view for a moment, and then he's there. He's not just there. He has stopped in front of my driveway standing there like Jason Voorhees. I kid you not, his arms were out by his sides and legs apart in an unnatural stance, like he was prepping for something, like he wanted to kill me. My heart is racing so hard I can barely hear, and I'm standing there, slack-jawed, looking at this would-be assailant, when one of my cats comes to see what's happening. My cat slides his body between the blinds and windows, further opening it to see this person, this man, looking towards me. I'm thinking he surely sees me, and if he does, this doesn't stop him. He starts walking down my driveway, undeterred and fixated. I lose sight of him under the balcony and awning, by this time, my eyes are watering in fear and tears and streaming down my face. I don't know what to do. I go sit on my bed. I picked up my mobile 
and dialed my dad, who lives a suburb away. He answers, and I whisper to him what was happening, and he says he'll be there as soon as he can. I lie down in my bed, and lie as still as possible, tears rolling down my cheeks, pure fear not knowing what this man was doing downstairs, and if he could get in. What if I hadn't have locked the doors? And then it dawned on me. Why am I lying here in the dark crying? Turn a light on. So I did. What seemed like a lifetime, but was probably just a couple of minutes later, my dad arrived. He had an umbrella with him. I live in Australia, so no guns but he could have at least brought a knife. I stayed on the phone with Dad while he searched outside, but the man was gone. Maybe me turning the light on scared him. I called the police, who said I should have called sooner. Of course I should have. I don't know why I didn't. They came out with a sniffer dog, but couldn't find him either. I don't know what he wanted, but for a good year after that, I was so scared living there, and I'm still a scaredy cat. But hearing other stories makes me realise I'm not alone, and we could all learn from these experiences, so we know what to do if something scary happens. I had recently moved from Adelaide to Melbourne to live with my boyfriend, now husband in a share house unit with one of his friends and his girlfriend, Nikita. My boyfriend and his friend were at work whilst Nikita and I were home. This was in a small two-storey, two-bedroom unit in a beautiful family-friendly suburb close to a local shopping mall. We loved our neighbours the street and area in general, and had never had any issues prior to this. Both the bedrooms were upstairs. Nikita was sleeping in, and I had just made my way downstairs into our kitchen slash lounge room. This was also the main room of the unit, with the front door, back door, and garage door on different walls of the room. It happened at around 10am. I can't explain how quickly the following events occurred, but it was all very sudden. I was standing at the sink, about to fill the kettle, when I heard the garage door open. My first thought was that it must be Nikita in the garage. We smoked out there, and not in the house, so I walked around the fridge to greet her. No more than two metres in front of me, was a man rushing into the room. He yelled, What's going on? We later laughed at this, saying that we should have asked him that. As I had a split second to process what was happening and register his face before turning and running for my best escape route, which in my mind was the stairs, the front door was closer, but dead bolted, and Nikita was upstairs. There was no way I'd leave her there. I ran as fast as I could, almost tripping over myself and the steps as my legs felt like concrete jelly, if you can imagine that. As I reached the top of the stairs and Nikita's bedroom door, I burst into her room, slammed the door and leant against it, chest heaving, and yelled for her to wake up. Nikita, where's your phone? Wake up! There's a man in the house! I half screamed, half cried. She sat up groggily, asking, What? There's a man in the house, where's your phone? Her eyes widened in terror, as she saw me against the door. It had no lock. I heard nothing, and figured we could make it to the bathroom, which had a lock, opposite from her room. The bathroom! Now! We didn't even question it. We just threw her door open and dashed into the next room. As I dialed the police, 
we heard heavy footsteps coming up from the wooden stairs. By now, we were both hysterical. I was begging the operator to send someone immediately, as the guy was coming to find us. He must have heard us on the phone to the cops, because after a pause, we heard hurried thumping down the steps again. The cops were there within two minutes, as they were only three streets away. We heard sirens, and the operator told us the police were there, and that it was safe to come out. They didn't find the guy. I gave a full description as best I could from the glimpse I caught, and was later asked to go to the police station in order to help construct an image to identify him. He was not much taller than I, perhaps five foot four, mid forties, bald in the middle, with shaved hair around the sides of his head, wire-framed glasses, stubby goatee, and dark, beady eyes. Fleecy zip-neck sweater, but I didn't get a good look at his pants. The scariest details came later. We realised the guy hadn't stolen anything. There was easily accessible items which he could have taken in a hurry. Laptop, phone, which was closer to him than me when he entered, and nothing taken from the garage. Another thing, there was no forced entry. The garage door to the house could only be accessed from inside the house or garage. He had opened the electronic roller shutter to the garage and entered the house via the door. That roller shutter could only be opened from the inside, manually, or outside with a remote control, which my boyfriend and his friend were never given when they moved in six months ago. I showed the identity sketch to our neighbours to alert them and a group of women next door, a mother and sister, and the lady's 16-year-old daughter. And they said he looked 99% like the previous tenant of our unit. We notified the police, as well as giving the names of three different people's mail still delivered to our address, plus told our housing agent. We checked the lease agreement, which stated the house keys and garage remote control were to be included. Only the keys were signed for. The remote control had been missing. Scarier still, a week or so later, some detectives came to the door to ask if I'd seen or heard anything more. I told them no. They handed me their car and left. I learnt that they were investigating about sexual predators. I feel sick knowing that. I told Nikita and our neighbours, and we all kept a close eye on things, but nothing more came of it, thankfully. I just wonder... If they ever found the guy before he threatened anyone else. This happened a few weeks ago. I recently graduated from college with a degree in biology, but decided to take a minute for myself before applying for medical school. My school was in a dangerous area, and I still rent in the area because my roommate is a master's student at the same university. We live about five blocks off campus, on a street where you wouldn't want to be caught alone at night. One day, I was by myself in our apartment, jamming to some tunes, and I heard banging on the door. This was odd, because my apartment is in a row home style with two other apartments below me, and a front door, which I had most certainly locked behind me when I entered the building about ten minutes prior. It was also concerning because I'm a five-foot-tall woman and currently alone. Since we live on the top floor, nobody but my roommate and I ever go up to the third floor, and I have not recently subbed a maintenance request. I turned the music off and sat still for a moment. The banging started once more. Now I recognised that this was stupid, but I walked to the front door and opened it and see in the tiniest crack a large, dirty, heavy set man with a beard on the other side. I asked, Can I help you? 
He looked me in the eye and said, I'm here to fix the air conditioning leak. You need to let me inside the unit so I can make the repairs. My management company only has one regular maintenance worker who I was familiar with, and I'd never seen the man standing at my door previously. He took a step forward and I quickly said, Wrong place, and slammed and locked the door. Initially, I wasn't too concerned, because maybe he was at the wrong place. I emailed my landlord to ask about maintenance reports in the area, to which she replied, the company have an HVAC technician out today, but none to your address. What did he look like? After describing him as a large, heavier white man with a full beard, she responded, that's not our guy. He's a small, thin man. Not sure who that was. Now, I'm worried about my safety, because clearly someone has keys to our building, and even my management company can't account for who he could have been. They will also not change the front door locks, so I'm kind of on my own on this one. I hope he doesn't come knocking again. This happened in early 2006, when I was living with my mum and stepdad, and my two adopted sisters. I was 19 at the time, male, and for a little backstory, my job at the time was doing security work in different parts of a west coast metropolitan city. At the time, we were leasing a three bedroom home with a giant living room. One of the bathrooms barely fit one person and had a small window. Included inside is a metal wire shelf thing that holds all my stuff like gel, toothbrushes and razors. My neighbors would hardly speak to each other and would never be home assuming they'd be at work. This will be important. So this event occurred when I had just gotten off work during a 12 hour graveyard shift, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And of course, I was tired as hell. So I quickly drove home, said hi to my mom while she made breakfast, and I slumped my way into my room and passed out with my uniform on. Black polo, tactical pants, and tactical boots. The small detail might come into play. I didn't even close the door to my room. That's how tired I was. Now, every day, my mum and stepdad left for work, along with my sisters that needed to head off to school at around 7am. That's usually when I have my freedom and played my PS4. Yell at strangers or friends through the mic and whatnot. But this morning, I decided to just catch up on my sleep. I half sleepily awoke to a series of the hardest fast knocks on our wooden door. Mistake number one. I ignored it and thought that it was a salesman or one of those religious people. Sometimes my stepdad comes home to get lunch, but he has a key to the house, so no worries, I thought and I quickly fell back asleep. I awoke again to the sound of loud footsteps running on the backward floor towards the door and the door slamming shut as loud as possible. Mistake number two. Okay, it was my stepdad running late to work after all, for his lunch break. No biggie. After my slumber, everyone came back home and started preparing for dinner while I hopped on my PS4, and my mum comes to me with a very serious face and says, Did someone break into the house? Did you leave any time today? No. Why? I was just sleeping until everyone came back. Okay. Come look at this. My mum takes me to the little bathroom from the earlier description. I look up at the little window. Cold air breezing through a broken frame and broken hinges. I look at the metal wire shelf and there was a dent on the top, as if someone had bent it while climbing in. I felt my spine tingle, as it hadn't really hit me at the moment. I thought back to what I heard while I was asleep. I heard someone knocking earlier, and I heard stepdad come to get something before leaving to work in a rush and slamming the door, I said. 
my mum said, Mijo, stepdad didn't go to the house today. My throat clenched and dropped to my stomach. My fingertips felt as if they had been frozen. I felt as if my body was sinking down into a deep, dark abyss in the ocean. I couldn't say anything. We stared at each other for an eternity. We started checking the whole house to see if anything had been taken. Nothing. Everything was as is. We asked a few neighbours if they had seen anything, but they weren't home. We gave the local PD a tip, just to let them know, and they already had knowledge of this. The person is still out there. My mind kept racing. What happened? Why wasn't anything taken? Why did this mystery burglar decide to run off? We came to the conclusion that this person knocked first to see if anyone was home. But seeing as I didn't answer, they did their duty and stepped into our house. And since I snore really loud, this person might have thought that there was a dog inside the house. Another possibility would be that this person saw someone in uniform and didn't want to mess with me, or just simply the fact that I was in the house. There were many possibilities that could have unfolded. It's clear what this burglar intentions were, just to grab everything valuable and leave. But what if this was a maniac stepping into my house with other intentions other than theft? The thought of someone watching me sleep from about five feet away gets me so anxious no matter where I am. This event made me realize that no matter who you are, you will always be vulnerable when you aren't alert of your surroundings. Now I'm a five foot 11 guy and I'm an average built dude. It's safe to say, I would have held my own against someone trying to break in along with my plethora of bludgeoning and bladed weapons. But even if you're armed to the teeth, you'll never know when someone will be watching you and planning something ill-mannered. There are things and people out there that have been shielded away from most of us, especially in this day and age. You'll never know who you walk past down the street. I am now 22 and married, with a one-year-old son and daughter on the way. This is something I've learned from and will be teaching my son and soon daughter to be aware of their surroundings and to not see the bright side of strangers trying to do them a good deed. They'll never know what their true intentions might be. This goes out to anyone hearing this. Be careful and watch your surroundings. This was two weeks ago now. I live in a small apartment, a safe one. But anyway, I live alone and no one else has a key to my place. I had had some friends over for dinner. It was late. I said I would do the dishes in the morning. I give the cat some water and turn off the lights. Head to bed. I wake up about five to go for a run, flip the lights on, throw on my gear about to head out, and stop to feed the cat. Then I notice my trash can is about ten feet from its regular spot, which I thought was odd. I am OCD about its placement, so I put it back. But then I notice the scariest thing. My dishes are all done. They're all put away. My kitchen is spotless. I know I didn't have that much to drink. So by now I'm freaked out. I call the cops. The guys show up and ask what's wrong. I tell them everything. They're just as shocked as I am. No signs of forced entry or anything. The only difference was my kitchen had been cleaned as I slept. And I go to my best friend's apartment while they investigate. They turn up nothing. I'm crapping my pants upon returning to my apartment. I have no clue what to think. I don't believe in the supernatural. But when this happens, 
small thoughts become big ones. So I truly believed that something supernatural was haunting me for giggles. But an hour later, my neighbour knocks on the door and asks why the cops showed up. I tell her the story. She laughs and tells me she got drunk and googled how to lockpick, practised on my door and then did all my dishes as compensation. I asked her how hard it was to lockpick the door because it can't be easy. And she tells me this was the tenth time she had tried lockpicking my door. And this time was the first time she'd been successful. But she was drunk every single time. I was just haunted by a drunk woman who was bored. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. First off, I want to say thank you for all the lovely messages of Get Well Soon and to look after my wife in yesterday's community comment thing. I don't even know what it's called. The community post? The community post. Let's just call it that. Thank you for everyone who commented. It really was lovely to, to read and to see what, what you guys had to say. And you're right. Uh, we had a good early night and... Pandora and my wife both, both both went to bed and it was good. She felt a lot better this morning and and that was really good and we, we had plans but then as the day went by and then in the evening it all came back so she still feels not that great. But I managed to record this before any of that happened. I just had to re-record the outro otherwise it would be untrue. So... I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. They are always very, very much appreciated. And if there's a story that you would like to share, feel free to send it to my Reddit or my email. Both can be found in the description. But anyway, for now, guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.